So first we're going to discuss what the CPA is, and then we're going to explore the anatomy through the perspective of what is probably the most common approach to the CPA, the retrosigmoid approach. And then we're going to follow cranial nerves seven and eight into the internal auditory canal and explore the anatomy of both the internal auditory canal and the petrous bone, um, as well as the mastoid. And from there, we'll see how we can traverse that anatomy in order to surgically access the cerebellopontine angle by anterior and posterior transpetrosal approaches. So as you may recall from our cranial approaches course, there are a number of different routes that can be used to access the cerebellopontine angle. Today, we'll look at the anatomy of those three routes. I'm not going to discuss indications for each. I'll leave that to the other great lectures I'm sure you're getting as a part of this acoustic neuroma month, but rather um, we'll focus on understanding navigating these regions. So first we'll look at the most common, which is the retrosigmoid corridor, uh, the, this blue arrow here. Um, and then we're going to examine um, a pre-sigmoid corridor uh, through the mastoid, um, the translabyrinthian approach. And then we're going to look at an anterior hearing sparing approach the anterior uh, transpetrosal approach through the petrous bone. So to begin, what is the cerebellopontine angle? To define it, we need to locate it. And it's found within the posterior fossa, just lateral to the clivus, and just posterior to the petrous temporal bone. Let's descend and take a closer look at the posterior surface um, of the petrous bone. So we're now hovering just behind the petrous bone, looking anterolaterally. So let's first orient ourselves. The red arrow is sitting along the midline of the clivus and it's pointing superiorly. So the, the, the skull here is slightly tilted to the left. So this is the red arrow is in the midline along the clivus pointing superior. We can see that here in our little skull model. We're basically that little yellow dot, excuse me, uh, behind the petrous ridge looking anteriorly at the foramen ovale. And the yellow arrow uh, is pointing true anterior. So the, anter so the yellow arrow is anterior and the red arrow is superior. So now we're essentially sitting in um, and ho hovering in the cerebellopontine angle looking anteriorly. Um, and what, mo what might be our most important bony landmark um, that we find here, for especially for us in our conversation today, is the internal acoustic canal, the internal auditory canal, um, where we will soon find seventh and eighth cranial nerves, as well as the labyrinthine and subarcuate artery. This is the petroclival fissure where the petrous bone meets the clivus. Um, this is virtually the medial limit of the cerebellopontine angle because medial to this, just behind the clivus, is where we find the prepontine cistern and the basilar artery. The petroclival fissure is also where we find the inferior petrosal sinus. It runs along the fissure. And um, the superior petrosal sinus runs along the petrous ridge right here. So the petrous ridge is here on the long axis of the petrous bone. This is where we find the superior petrosal sinus inside the tentorium, when the tentorium is attaching to the petrous ridge, and then the inferior petrosal sinus running down uh, along the petroclival fissure. And as it runs down inferiorly, we're gonna find the jugular foramen, which is beneath the cerebellopontine angle and where we find the lower cranial nerves, nerves nine through 11 here, and then also the 12th nerve going into the hypoglossal canal, but not something we're covering today since it's below our target region. So here um, we have a, a rough depiction of where the cerebellopontine angle is located in relation to the dry skull. It's posterior to the petrous bone, lateral to the petroclival fissure, superior to the jugular foramen, and inferior to the tentorium. 
now that we know where it is, what is the CPA? And the, the CPA is just a cistern. And I'm sure you all know a cistern is just an intradural space separated by arachnoid um, and filled with cerebrospinal fluid. Um, and we call it um, an angle in this case because it's located between, uh, at the angle between the anterior surface of the cerebellum and the lateral surface of the pons. As I mentioned before, you can see the medial to the, the cerebellopontine angle is the prepontine cistern um, running along the clivus where we find that the basilar artery. So again, the CPA is inferior to the tentorium, posterior to the petrous bone, lateral to the petroclival fissure, anterior to the cerebellum and pons, and superior to the jugular foramen and lower cranial nerves. Let's take a look at everything together. So we're looking at a right side skull base. The tentorium above the cerebellum is cut to reveal the superior surface of the cerebellum. Um, and the top of the image here is anterior. The back is uh, posterior. The, the right for the right side is lateral. Um, and let's zoom in. We can see uh, the here, we can see the midbrain. We can see third nerve coming up and over the uh, posterior clinoid process and uh, exiting the dura, entering the cavernous sinus, something we looked at in our anterior circulation lecture, which you can go back to. We're not gonna cover much today, but uh, just here underneath it, we see the superior cerebellar artery coming around, um, infratentorial, and we know that because this is the, the free edge of the tentorium uh, right here. Uh, I don't, can you see my mouse? I'm not sure. But uh, if you can, I, that's where I'm pointing. Um, and then this is cut to reveal uh, the superior surface of the cerebellum. So now let's rotate this image uh, and look at the right side from a lateral view. So now um, we're lateral. Uh, so this is posterior. We're looking medial. This is the, the long axis of the clivus. Here's the basilar artery running up the clivus. Here's the posterior clinoid process. Here's third nerve. Here's fourth nerve running with the tentorium. And here's the free edge of the tentorium. Um, and just down here, we can look in, in that yellow highlighted space into the cerebellopontine angle. So let's move a little anterior. Now, we're positioned anterior looking posterior. Um, at the basilar artery, and we can see the cerebellopontine angle here. Um, and we can see the internal auditory canal. So we know where the CPA is and what, and what the CPA is, but what about its contents? So inside the cerebellopontine angle, we find the intradural segments of cranial nerves five, six, seven, and eight, um, the flocculus of the cerebellum, which is a small lobe um, of the cerebellum near the middle peduncle, the foramen of Lushka, which connects to the fourth or connects the cistern to the fourth ventricle, um, and the anterior inferior cerebellar artery, uh, or the ICA, which is a branch of the basilar artery and courses laterally um, in proximity to, to cranial nerves seven and eight before they enter the internal auditory canal. Um, let's also look at some of the surrounding anatomy that we see here. So here's the basilar artery coming up along the clivus. The, the, the fifth nerve is cut here because um, the, the brainstem is pulled back so we can see everything. So this is left side, third nerve coming. We don't see uh, the rest of it. This is fourth nerve also cut. This is on the right side. Um, so three, four, five which would be coming out of its uh, uh, root, coming uh, and entering Meckel's cave, exiting the dura. Uh, we have the ica coming off the basilar artery, going towards the internal auditory canal. Um, here we have six nerve, also cut, but this would be on its way to Dorello's canal. This is the pons, obviously, superior surface of the cerebellum, the superior cerebellar artery coming around towards that superior surface of the cerebellum. Um, and then we have the seventh and eighth nerves coming out, uh, entering the internal auditory canal and going through the auditory canal. Here's our flocculus. As seven and eight go through the internal auditory canal, um, they come out, uh, seven enters the genicular ganglion, 
gives off the greater superficial petrosal nerve, which is superficial to the petrous carotid running in the middle fossa underneath V3. So this is the petrous ridge. This is the middle fossa and everything behind the petrous ridge is in the posterior fossa. Our view in the middle fossa is extradural. Our view in the posterior fossa here is intradural. So let's take a look at some of the more, actually, let's, let's go now, we go right to the uh, retrosigmoid approach. So now that we know what the CPA is, let's have a look um, at, its, at the anatomy as seen through a retrosigmoid approach, which is behind the sigmoid sinus, posterior lap. So the retrosigmoid approach, posterior lateral approach behind the sigmoid sinus, watch the orientation of the skull and take careful note of the perspective because this is going to be our orientation as we go forward. The craniotomy or the craniectomy is fashion. Uh, the cerebellum is, is retracted um, and the corridor is accessed um, and we can see three distinct nerve complexes here which we'll come back to in a minute. So here's our perspective. This is the retrosigmoid perspective, posterior lateral perspective, uh, this is a nice depiction of the direction we're looking in. We are looking in the direction of the yellow arrow. So from lateral to medial with slightly looking anterior. Um, you can see here in the picture, this is seven and eight. Um, and we are just gently retracting the cerebellum to see in between the posterior surface of the petrous bone uh, and the cerebellum, which is, of course, the cerebellum pontine angle. And uh, we are intradural. So let's identify the anatomy we find here. So first up here, we have the SCA, the superior cerebellar artery that we saw before coming off of uh, the basilar artery, curving around, coming in to the superior surface of the cerebellum. And uh, just superficial to that, we have fourth nerve. Fourth nerve originates posteriorly, wraps around with the free edge of the tentorium uh, on its way towards the cavernous sinus. Down here we have uh, the fifth nerve, the trigeminal nerve and the superior petrosal vein, which is entering the superior petrosal sinus, which is running in the tentorium along that petrous ridge. Down here in yellow, we have, of course, the internal auditory canal. And this is the, referring to the bony opening here, the meatus of the internal auditory canal. So now let's move a little bit inferior and you see our helicopter here. Let's take on the perspective of that helicopter pilot as he descends. There's our internal auditory canal too. Okay, so now we're taking on this more zoomed in perspective. So this is still our internal auditory canal. This is going, you know, coursing anterior medially so this is anterior medial, we're lateral, we're looking directly medial along that long axis of the petrous bone. The petrous ridge and tentorium are above us, we don't see them. And this is our fifth nerve. So this is the intradural portion of fifth nerve as it's coming out of the brainstem, going up over the petrous ridge, entering Meckel's cave and exiting the dura. Here is seventh nerve. Seventh nerve coming off on its straight direct course into the internal auditory canal. And we have eighth nerve doing very much the same. And in between them here, we have the ICA, the anterior inferior cerebellar artery um, and the labyrinthine artery. So if we retract the cerebellar hemisphere a little bit and we zoom in, we can clearly see that eighth nerve, the vestibular nerve. There's the ICA again, which gives rise to the labyrinthine artery and the subarcuate artery. And down here, this is the origin of seventh nerve. So here we have seven and eight running into the internal auditory canal, and we have the ICA, and in this case, the ICA giving off a labyrinthine and subarcuate arteries. Over here, this spongy substance is the choroid plexus of the fourth ventricle, just atop the foramen of Lushka, which connects the cistern with the fourth ventricle. And down here, 
we have our lower complex, which uh, this is the ninth nerve or the glossopharyngeal nerve, a little bit lower than the CPA where we're gonna be looking today. This is the 10th nerve, vagus nerve, um, and then 11, uh, the accessory nerve. Now let's keep that same orientation, but zoom out and, and see more from the top and add in some things we've seen before. So here is the tentorium and it's incised um, along the axis here. And given that this is also the long axis, we're following the, the Petrus ridge. So again, we're lateral, we're looking medial. This is the tentorium. So remember the tentorium for the CPA is our roof. So in this case, it's cut just so we can see a little bit more. Um, and we can also see here within the tentorium, we have that superior petrosal sinus and, then, and there's a superior petrosal vein that drains into that superior petrosal sinus. We can see also branches of the SCA. And here, this is fifth nerve. So the trigeminal nerve coming off, going straight up and over that Petrus Ridge, entering Meckel's Cave, exiting the dura. We're hovering in the posterior fossa. So this yellow arrow is pointing to the anterior surface of the Petrus bone, which is in the middle fossa. So the arrow is super tentorial and everything above this cut is super tentorial and everything we're looking at here is infratentorial. So everything underneath is infratentorial and we're of course intradural. So if this is fifth nerve up here, down here, we have sixth nerve. And this is sixth nerve on its straight course from its origin all the way up to Durello's canal as it exits the dura, enters the cavernous sinus through Durello's canal. And of course, as we've just seen, we have seventh and eighth nerves entering the internal acoustic canal. Um, that one in the middle there is the nervous intermedius. Um, so let's continue um, to descend a bit, but we're gonna keep our eyes on seventh and eighth uh, as a reference. Okay, so we're just a little bit lower. So now just remember our retrosigmoid perspective here. Um, we are looking medial along the long axis, posterior surface of the petrous bone. And what do we expect to find here? Sorry, that's the sigmoid sinus. So we're retrosigmoid. So we're moving the sigmoid sinus, we're coming behind it. That's the sigmoid sinus. And here, we find the vertebral basilar junction. These are the left and right vertebral arteries that are coming up and forming a very high riding or decently high riding uh, basilar artery. And again, we can see that cord flex, the fourth ventricle and the foramen of Lushman. And here is ninth nerve, 10th nerve, uh, and 11th nerve all going into the jugular frame. So aside from the opening of the tentorium here, this is the anatomy you see in a, in a retrosigmoid approach. And it, it's worth noting that this approach gives us access to three distinct neurovascular complexes. The upper neurovascular complex, which is the fifth nerve um, and the superior cerebellar artery the middle, which is the seventh and eighth nerves and the anterior inferior cerebellar artery and the lower cranial nerves, nine through 12, um, along with the posterior inferior cerebellar artery. The superior corridor can be used for accessing the upper complex um, for, for say microvascular decompression for trigeminal neuralgia. The middle corridor can be used to access a lesion in the mid portion of the CPA, um, like an acoustic neuroma. Um, something involving nerve seven and eight. And the inferior corridor can be used to access to some degree the lower neurovascular complex and can also be used in hemifacial spasm because the facial nerve root is there um, and it's only a few millimeters above the glossopharyngeal nerve um, and the pica can, can often be an offending vessel. So now let's continue by following 
um, the 7A complex into the internal auditory canal and beyond. But before, um, are there any questions so far about the retrosignoid uh, anatomy? Okay, we'll keep going then. Moving on to the temporal bone. The temporal bone is, a, is an anatomically complicated and compact structure that encases so many vital structures, including the internal carotid artery, the semicircular canals, the inner ear, the, uh, the, the, uh, the jugular, uh, sigmoid sinus jugular bulb, Um, and it can be very difficult to navigate and access due to how compact they are and the fact that they're located all inside of the bone itself. So let's begin in the middle fossa and work our way back towards the internal auditory canal. But let's first reorient ourselves since, uh, since some of you may be new to this. So um, we can use um, these red lines here. So this horizontal line is running from posterior to anterior along the midline. So the right of this image is anterior. The, um, the middle is medial and midline and the posterior and the back the left side is posterior. Uh, up here we have superior, down would be inferior. Here is medial and here is lateral. We can see that also on the dry skull. And what we were looking at before here is the petrous ridge posterior surface of the petrous bone, but now we're gonna look at the anterior surface of the petrous bone within the middle fossa. Um, then here's the clivus coming up, giving off the posterior clinoid process. Here's the anterior clinoid process. And here are our foramina. So nose, vertex, ear, occiput. So let's just do a quick review of the anatomy here. Um, so this is an extradural view of the floor of the middle fossa. Um, the epineurium covering a lot of the cavernous sinus has been removed. Um, so what we're looking back here is the posterior fossa on the other side. This is all intradural, but the dura is you know, open here. We're underneath the dura. So um, what we see starting from the top is we have second nerve, the optic nerve running into the optic canal. Uh, above the internal carotid artery here, which is uh, just exiting the cavernous sinus. This is the free edge of the tentorium, which has been cut so we can see third nerve. And remember we saw third nerve from that previous perspective. Here, third nerve is coming again up and over that petri the posterior clonoid process, um, exiting the dura through the oculomotor triangle, entering the cavernous sinus uh, on its way to um, the superior orbital fissure. Here's fourth nerve also coming with the tentorium. And here we have fifth nerve that comes, exits the dura through Meckel's cave, comes onto the floor of the middle fossa. Sorry, I should say up and over the Petrus Ridge via Meckel's cave, comes into the middle fossa, gives off V1, goes through superior orbital fissure, V2 uh, through foramen rotundum, and V3 for, through foramen ovale. Um, on the very bottom here, we can see the middle meningeal artery coming through foramen spinosa. And just, uh, on this side here now in yellow, we can see the greater superficial petrosal nerve coming out of the bone and coursing medially along the floor of the middle fossa on top of, of where we expect the petrous segment of the carotid artery to be um, and coursing underneath B3. So let's take the bone away and give ourselves x-ray vision through this bone. Now, you can see our little bus here. So we're gonna take a drive and we wanna drive our goal. We're now sitting on V1. So our goal is gonna to be to drive to the external ear. Um, so let's take a look at our, our possible route options to get from sitting on V1 to the external ear. So first, here's that GSPN that we just saw. So GSPN coming off the geniculate ganglion, coursing on top of the petrous segment of the carotid underneath 
V3. And we can see the deep petrosal nerve in route to join the GSPN um, and enter the Vidian canal uh, to become the Vidian nerve over here. And we can, we also have the lesser petrosal nerve on its way to the otic ganglion. So the, we have here the geniculate ganglion, facial nerve, internal auditory canal, geniculate ganglion, greater superficial petrosal nerve on top of the bone. You can see why that's an indicator of where the petrous carotid is, because the petrous carotid is running in the bone, toward, you know, uh, in the carotid canal, um, in the petrous bone, running medially towards the cavernous sinus. And so we have GSPN, deep petrosal, and lesser petrosal nerves. And that's the genicular ganglion. And the genicular ganglion is the most significant ganglion um, of the facial nerve. Um, and it sits in really close proximity to another very important structure that we're gonna be seeing a lot here. Um, any idea what might be in this area? This is the cochlea. So let's zoom in and take a closer look at this, at this region. So now we put the bone back. Orientation is roughly the same. Here's again, fifth nerve entering Meckel's cave, exiting the dura, coming up and over. Here's our carotid exposed. Here's our GSPN, V1, V2, V3. Here's all the, uh, up here is the cavernous sinus. So we're gonna be focusing on this area now. So we've zoomed in. So we can see now, we can see the superior petrosal sinus here in the tentorium. The, everything to the left of this or behind this is the posterior fossa. Everything here is in the middle fossa. This view is extradural. This view is intradural. So here we can see fifth nerve coming out, coming up and over the petrous ridge and trifurcating. Um, and uh, we, uh, so let's pay attention, spe you know, specifically here to the middle meningeal artery, which is coming through the foramen spinosum, the GSPN on top of the carotid, uh, and V3. We're going to use these to orient ourselves as we go further. And here, of course, is the internal auditory canal. So remember, our goal is to drive to the external ear. So if we drive, if we we're sitting now here uh, on the GSPN, if we take a right, go through the geniculate ganglion into the internal auditory canal, it's probably going to be a dead end. But let's go in and, and see for ourselves. So we're going into the internal auditory canal. Orientation now is a little more top down. We have a little more bone removed, so we can see the middle and inner ear, uh, the semicircular canals, and the IAC but everything is roughly the same orientation wise. So now we can clearly see here the facial nerve from its origin, intra, the intradural portion within the cerebellopontine angle as it's entering the internal auditory canal. It's coming, go coursing straight and then entering uh, the geniculate ganglion. And the geniculate ganglion is giving off that GSPN and it continues uh, and curves around to become the tympanic segment of the facial nerve. So, and that's going to the tympanic cavity uh, and entering the fallopian canal, which we're gonna see in a minute from the, from the other side, from the transmastoid perspective. So we have the intradural segment, we have the intracanalicular segment of the nerve, now we have the tympanic segment going towards the tympanic membrane, and then we're gonna see the fallopian segment in the mastoid. Here's the vestibular nerve. This is eighth nerve, specifically the superior vestibular nerve. And this one is on its way to the semicircular canals. Um, and we're gonna come back and look at the, the relationship between seven and eight within the IAC shortly. So as we saw before, here's that nervous intermedius. Uh, and then uh, here we also see the anterior inferior cerebellar artery coming off the basal artery and coming around. And just medial to the geniculate ganglion, we 
find that cochlea. So here's our cochlea. You can see the cochlear spirals in there. Um, and, and as we're driving a long seventh nerve from its origin, we want to get extra cranial. We can either go through trachea ganglion, we can make a left. We can make a left and we can go on to the GSPN, or we can make a right and go on to the tympanic segment and go to the mastoid. We don't want to go to the Vidian Canal, and we just came from that area, so we're going to go around and follow the tympanic segment. And if we follow that tympanic segment, it brings us here to the labyrinth, which is the inner ear. Um, and it's comprised, it's composed of the semicircular canals, including the lateral semicircular canal, sometimes called the horizontal canal, the posterior semicircular canal, which is the most posterior, and the superior semicircular canal. And due to its height, the superior semicircular canal, in some cases, creates a ridge on the base of the skull, known as the arcuate eminence, which you can see here in this really nice depiction. It's not, it's not a good, great correlation, but it, it's a, sometimes a good indicator. Um, and you can see uh, here what that kind of looks like. So just underneath the labyrinth, we have the tympanic cavity, which um, comprises the middle ear and contains the ossicle, uh, the ossicles, which of course include the malleus, the incus, and the stapes, which bangs on the tympanic membrane and brings us out into the external auditory canal. On the intracranial side of the tympanic membrane, we have something else here, and it's a muscle. I bet some of you know what this muscle is. It helps us dampen loud sounds. Some people can involuntarily, can, can voluntarily flex it and control it. This is the tensor tympani muscle. And right underneath the tensor tympani muscle, we have the eustachian tube, which connects the middle ear to the nasopharynx. And last but not least, we have, again, our superior petrosal sinus, running in the tentorium along that petrous ridge. So now let's zoom in and take a look at the relationships between those structures inside the internal auditory canal. This is a lateral view. We're back in a, a retrosigmoid perspective. So left of the image is posterior, uh, right of the image is kind of anteromedial. So we're lateral looking medial. Um, I'm sorry, I said lateral, but the lateral perspective, medial, looking medially at the internal auditory canal. So here's the internal auditory canal. And we have seventh nerve entering the canal and eighth nerve large beneath it. And here is the anterior inferior cerebellar artery um, separating the two in this case. And again, the subarcuate artery and the labyrinthine artery both of which most commonly originate from the ICA. So this is a mnemonic device, which many of you may be familiar with um, from studying for boards, um, seven up, coke down. Um, but uh, so this basically describes the different compartments of the internal auditory canal. We have our superior and inferior compartments, that are divided into anterior and posterior as well. So let's take a look at, let's see what that really means and what that looks like. So here we have seventh nerve in the antero superior compartment of the internal auditory canal, along with the nervous intermediate and cranial nerve eight in full. And in the superior compartment, um, seven and eight are separated by the vertical crest known as Bill's bar. So this is the superior compartment up here. This is the inferior compartment. And this is what separates the superior compartment uh, into 
uh, its respective sides, and this is known as Bill's bar, vertical crest. So seven up, superior or seventh nerve, so superior vestibular nerve, Bill's bar, transverse crest. And we can see eighth nerve is made up of three distinct nerves, the superior vestibular nerve and the posterior, a uh, posterior superior compartment of the IEC separated uh, again by Bill's bar. Oops. Um, and separated uh, from its compatriots in the inferior compartment by the transverse or, or sometimes known as the falciform crest here. And the inferior vestibular nerve in the inferior compartment of the internal auditory canal, which runs with the cochlear nerve, sometimes called the auditory nerve. So superior compartment, inferior compartment, separated by the transverse crest, and then the superior compartment separated by Bill's bar. So let's put some more of these pieces together. Let's just take a look at this from a superior perspective. So here we have seventh nerve running in the IAC, forming the geniculate ganglion, that fork in the road, giving off the greater superficial petrosal nerve, which is going through the facial hiatus, entering the floor of the middle fossa extradurally, um, or, you know, traveling on top of that petrous carotid on its way underneath V3. And in the vertex of uh, GSPN and seventh nerve, uh, the angle between them, the vertex of the angle between them, we find the cochlea. You can see its spirals here. And on the other side of the superior compartment, we have the superior vestibular nerve on its way to the labyrinth via the vestibule, which is essentially the central part of the labyrinth. Um, hence why we see the superior semicircular canal here. And just remember that arcuate eminence from earlier. And the superior vestibular nerve, again, is separated in that superior compartment by Bill's bar, the vertical crest, uh, Bill's bar named after uh, William House of the House Institute, the House Brackman scale. And separated from the inferior compartment by that transverse or, or falciform crest. And in the inferior compartment, we have the inferior vestibular, the cochlear nerves. Um, and if we fall and and the, oh, sorry, and the cochlear nerves. And if we follow the facial nerve into the geniculate ganglion through the GSPN, we know we end up back in the middle fossa going towards the cavernous sinus. So like we said, we want to follow the seventh nerve out and go towards that tympanic segment. Um, if we follow the cochlear nerve, we're going to terminate inside the cochlea here, which we don't want to do. We want to get to that external ear. Here's the cochlear nerve coming into the cochlea. If we follow the superior and inferior vestibular nerves, we terminate in the labyrinth. But if we follow the facial nerve through the geniculate ganglion and go the other direction via the tympanic segment uh, of the facial nerve, we can get all the way to the stylomastoid foramen where the facial nerve exits the skull. Um, and we now we're on the other side so let's go back for one sec. Here's the facial nerve coming out. Here's the nuclear ganglion. Here's the tympanic segment coming up and around the horizontal canal. And let's take a look now from the other side. This is the lateral side. So now we're looking lateral, looking medial. Here's that horizontal canal. The tympanic segment is, I'm sorry. Here's the horizontal canal. That tympanic segment is coming around. So we're following it around and this is where it enters the fallopian canal and becomes the fallopian segment, traveling in the mastoid all the way to the stylomastoid foramen. It's also a really nice shot here of the tympanic membrane. So this is the anatomy of the temporal bone. Uh, before we go on, are there any questions here as to the anatomy of the temporal bone or the internal auditory canal? 
Okay, so now we can examine the transpetrosal routes, the routes through the petrous temporal bone to the internal auditory canal and cerebellar pontine. We're gonna start with the anterior route, which takes us from the middle fossa through the petrous apex to the internal auditory canal and cerebellar pontine angle. So here we have a top-down view. You can see the superior surface of the cerebellum again. You can see the pons over here. This is where our, our cerebellar pontine angle um, would be found. Um, take a look again here at the at B3, trigeminal nerve B3. Take actually a look at intradural five as well as extradural V3. Um, and we're gonna use this uh, as an orientation as we continue. So now we're looking posteriorly, we can see the same thing. Here's that fifth nerve coming up and over Petrus Ridge, there's V3. There's our greater superficial petrosal nerve um, on top of the Petrus carotid undergoing underneath V3. And here, this is where the free of the tentorium was. So this red arrow up top is pointing posterior. This is fourth nerve, this is third nerve. Um, and then this arrow on the left is pointing lateral. So given all the complex structures in the petrous bone, there's one open safe route by the petrous apex from the middle fossa to the cerebellum pontine angle um, along the internal auditory canal um, to the superior to the petrous carotid and medial to the superior semicircular canals. So let's, let's just take a closer look at that. This is known as Kawase's triangle. Um, so as we saw, GSPN is our superficial landmark uh, for the internal auditory canal. So keep that in mind. So here's V3, keep that in mind as well. And the superior semicircular canal and arcuate eminence. So we'll use these to orient ourselves. This is the superior petrosal sinus running along the petrous ridge. Here's the intradural fifth nerve coming up and over that petrous ridge. Um, and entering the middle fossa. So V3, carotid, superior semicircular canal. And at the base here, this is where we expect to find the internal auditory canal uh, with seventh and eighth nerves coming. So it's running in this direction towards the geniculate ganglion. And this is of course where we expect to find, uh, sorry, on this side, the cochlea. So this is our route, this is the left side. Um, so we're going to be going through the petrous apex uh, and then coming out here, uh, exposing the internal auditory canal and coming out with a little bit into the cerebellum pontine angle. So this is the petrous ridge where the drilling would take place. We're going to use the petrous ridge GSPN B3 um, as landmarks and uh, arcuate eminence. So let's zoom in to a more surgical view. So now this is a surgical view. We still have V3 here. This is GSPN. The bone's been a little bit drilled out so you can see where that petrous carotid is. Here's the arcuate eminence. So we can start to drill in that, in that triangle because we know we're safe here. We expect the cochlea to be where? So this is V3, petrous ridge is the superior aspect is up here. So seventh and eighth nerves are coming in, coming through as they become more superficial, this direction. So this is where we expect uh, the IAC to be. We expect geniculate ganglion to be around here as it gives off GSPN. And in that angle between them is where we expect the cochlea to be. And here's roughly where we expect the superior semicircular canal to be. So let's, as we see here, so let's keep removing bone. And now we have found our cochlea. We left it intact because this is a hearing sparing approach as opposed to the posterior transpetrosal approach with removal of the labyrinth, translabyrinthine approach, which we're gonna see after. So we expect, this is the, the dura of the posterior fossa, the dura of the internal auditory canal. It's all closed, but we, if we imagine what's behind there, we know we have seventh and eighth nerve coming off uh, the brainstem entering the internal auditory canal. 
we know seventh nerve comes up, it makes that you know turn to form the genicular ganglion. We can either go left in this case towards uh, the tympanic segment, we can go right towards the GSPN, um, and we expect the cochlea to be in between uh, the GSPN and the uh, seventh nerve. So if we open the dura there, and we zoom in, remember our perspective is still the same. This is V3, this is GSPN, this is where our cochlea is. We find intradural fifth nerve. And that may be confusing initially because if we're looking at V3, how are we seeing intradural five? But we've sort of just drilled on top of ourselves. So we've exposed, we drilled that Petrus ridge. So we're looking uh, uh, at the origin of the fifth nerve as it comes uh, up and over that Petrus ridge and then later forms V3. And as we, we turn a little bit lateral and we find intradural seventh and eighth nerves. In this case, the loop of the, of the ICA is separating them and we're following them into the internal auditory canal. And if we take a little, uh, we take a little bit more bone medially and we turn and we look medially, um, we can see six nerve uh, right here. And this is six nerve coming off on its way into Dorello's canal, exiting the dura, entering the cavernous sinus. Um, just underneath the anterior inferior cerebellar artery here, which is coming off of the basilar artery right here. And if we look really deep, we can see the vertebral basilar junction. So both verts coming up, forming the basilar artery, um, due to the fact this is a high riding basilar artery. So here we can see fifth nerve, intradural, sixth nerve, intradural. We have the ICA, as well as seventh and eighth nerves intradural and the vertebral basilar junction. And if we lift the basilar artery, we can see this. Any idea what this might be? This is the contralateral ICA on the other side. So this is the anterior transpetrosal route to the cerebellum ponte angle and the internal auditory canal. So now let's take a look um, at a posterior transpetrosal route, route through the mastoid and through the labyrinth that sacrifices here. Earlier we saw the retrosigmoid, and now we're seeing a pre-sigmoid perspective. So these green and red arrows here um, are the transmastoid routes. The green is the translabyrinthine approach, which we'll see. So that means we're going through the mastoid. This is the mastoid and its air cells. Through the mastoid antrum, through the labyrinth, which is the semicircular canals, and into the cerebellopontine angle. So this one is a right side. This is our mastoid. Let's zoom in. So here we have the mastoid tip. Here is the zygoma and the root of the zygoma. And just beneath it, here we have the external auditory canal and going in, that's where we find the tympanic membrane. So now we need to reorient, this is an anatomical position, let's reorient this into a surgical position. So now top is anterior, Mastoid tip is inferior. Um, the, this portion of the mastoid here um, is posterior and on the left is superior. So nose, vertex, occiput, foot. So now we're looking at the same thing with the bone put back in place. So this is our view. Actually, the, the image rotation is wrong. Don't look at that. This is correct. This is the mastoid tip. This is the uh, uh, external uh, acoustic canal there. Um, this is what's called the supermeatal spine, the spine of Henle. 
Um, and here's the lambdoid suture. So this mastoid tip is inferior um, and we are coming in front of the sigmoid sinus. So as we start to remove bone here, you're gonna see the mastoid air cells. You're gonna see the middle fossa dura right here. As we take more, as you go deeper, you're gonna see the mastoid antrum. If you keep going, you're gonna still see the mastoid antrum and you're also gonna see this over here. Take a second and think about what this structure might be. This is the incus. And the incus is useful in this approach because it gives you the rough depth of where the facial nerve is. So you can, once you find the incus, you know what depth the facial nerve is, you can continue to remove bone and you can see here's the incus and here's the facial nerve. Um, and you can see the canals are starting to, to come in. You can, this is the inside of the canal and the labyrinthectomy portion is starting. So as you skeletonize uh, the, the fallopian canal, this is the fallopian segment of the facial nerve traveling within the fallopian canal, the panic segment coming around that we saw before, entering the fallopian canal, becoming the fallopian segment, traveling inferiorly along the anterior margin of the mastoid towards the stylomastoid foramen where it exits the skull. Um, here we also see the sigmoid sinus with the bone removed. Um, and the, the vestibule here that we saw before. So if you proceed with the labyrinthectomy, you remove the semicircular canals, and then you expose the sinodural angle, uh, the angle between the sigmoid sinus and the dura, as well as the jugular bulb. And if we re remove the rest of the bone here, we find the dura of the internal auditory canal, and the posterior fossa dura. So this is the entire mastoid drilled out, labyrinth removed. Here's the dura of the internal acoustic canal. So extracranially here, we have the mastoid tip. Um, and then stylomastoid foramen, and we can follow the facial nerve all the way back through the fallopian canal, all the way around what would have been the horizontal canal, it's been removed back into that internal acoustic canal Remember, it makes that turn. Here's that turn. Um, and it comes back in. Now we're inside the dura of the internal acoustic canal as it comes back towards uh, the posterior fossa. So just beyond this little bit is where we'd expect to see that intradural portion of seven and eight. So let's open the dura and see. And of course, that's what we see. Here's our here's seventh nerve coming around. And then here's intracanalicular seven, meaning within the canal, and intradural seven, seven, oh, seven and eight, sorry, and um, our flocculus. So here you can see everything labeled. There's the incus, facial nerve, middle fossa dura, and then uh, sigmoid sinus, jugular bulb. We are pre-sigmoid, so in front of the sigmoid sinus this time, as opposed to posterior to the sigmoid sinus in the retrosigmoid approach. Um, but uh, you have to remove the semicircular canals to expose this. And here we have, uh, superiorly, we have fifth nerve. Uh, and then closer to us here, we have the facial nerve um, right there. So as we zoom in, welcome back to the cerebellopontine angle. Uh, the retrosigmoid approach, um, again, behind the sigmoid sinus, but here we're in front of that sigmoid sinus and we can see here's fifth nerve entering Meckel's cave, going up and over that Petrus Ridge, uh, exiting the dura and, and trifurcating on the floor of the middle fossa. Um, don't be thrown off by this. This is just the motor root of the fifth nerve. Um, down here we have that sixth nerve. So five, six, six coming up, entering Dorello's canal which is covered by Gruber's ligament, uh, exiting the dura, entering the cavernous sinus. Um, and here we have seventh nerve and eighth nerve. This is the superior vestibular nerve and the inferior vestibular nerve. And then in the middle, we have the nervous intermedius 
and together they are going into the, the internal auditory canal and between them we have the ICA. And down here we have the lower cranial nerves, nine going into the jugular foramen and 10 going into the jugular foramen. So um, if we look further inside that internal auditory canal, uh, we can see again that entire course now of the seventh nerve. You know, here's eighth nerve, here's seventh nerve coming back. So origin coming all the way up, intracranial portion, intracanalicular portion, going through the canal, coming up where we expect the geniculate ganglion to be, GSPN going medially in the middle fossa, whereas we took that right turn around tympanic segment coming over here where that horizontal canal was, entering the fallopian canal, going through into the fallopian segment and all the way down to the stylomastoid foramen to exit the skull. So that's the entire course of the seventh nerve. We saw the entire course of the eighth nerve before. And now if we detach uh, that facial nerve from the geniculate ganglion, um, we can uh, transpose it backwards. Um, and this is known as a transcochlear approach. It gives access uh, to drill the cochlea and expose the petrous carotid, not very common anymore, but uh, we can also see here just clearly, uh, if, we, if we go back, we can see that bend where we were talking about stracular ganglion, tympanic segment, there's that nice bend, you can transpose that over. Um, and then we can just continue following that into the spinal mastoid foramen, exiting the skull. And we can follow that out. Here with the semicircular canals intact, we can see that horizontal canal again, horizontal, uh, posterior, and the superior canal. Um, superior, you can kind of imagine why that has some relationship to the arcuate eminence based on its location. Uh, you can imagine also that seventh nerve again coming around the, the horizontal or lateral canal um, and then coming out here into the mastoid, sort of a transition point from the petrous bone to the mastoid, uh, and then coming all the way down, going through that stylomastoid foramen. We also see the sigmoid sinus coming around, forming the jugular bulb, going through the jugular foramen down there. I'm not going to talk too much about. And then here, this is with the jugular foramen open, just so you can see what that looks like. So we came through the mastoid here. This is the mastoid. These are the mastoid air cells. This is the external auditory canal. We came through the mastoid, through the labyrinth, um, in order to, to find the internal auditory canal, cerebellopontine angle, here, again, is seven coming around. Here uh, is the geniculate ganglion. Here's GSPN. Here's the tympanic segment. And here's the entrance into the fallopian canal that we just looked at. But this is from a different perspective. But the anatomy is the same. You just have to reorient reorient your mental, uh, mental model of the anatomy. So to review, from an anatomical perspective, let's take a look at everything that we can see here. Um, and we can start from the, the very top. This is third nerve. Um, third nerve coming straight down on top of the posterior clinoid process, which is coming off of the clivus, which is anterior to the basilar artery that's running up along the clivus, uh, the prepontine cistern. We have third nerve coming up and over, uh, the posterior clinoid, um, exiting the dura via the ocular motor triangle, entering the cavernous sinus on its way to the superior orbital fissure. Above that, we have the anterior clinoid process. And medial to that, we can see, in this case, the ophthalmic segment, and then underneath that, the clinoid segment, and then the cavernous segment of the internal carotid artery. We have fourth nerve that originates posteriorly, wrapping around uh, a midbrain coming um, with the free edge of the tentorium, uh, exiting the dura over here and entering the cavernous sinus also on its way to superior orbital fissure. So three, four, then we have fifth nerve coming from its uh, origin intradurally going up and over that petrous ridge 
as you can see here, entering Mecco's cave, trifurcating on the floor of the middle fossa into V1, which is going to the superior orbital fissure in the cavernous sinus, V2, which is going to the foramen rotundum, uh, exiting the skull in the cavernous sinus, cavernous sinus all the way down to here. Then we have V3 uh, exiting, uh, going on top of the GSPN, exiting through foramen ovale. We can also see middle meningeal artery coming up through foramen spinosum. So that's three, four, five. Here we have six nerves, six nerve coming up, exiting the dura through Durello's canal, which is covered by Gruber's ligament, entering the cavernous sinus, going underneath V1 on its way to the superior orbital fissure. Here we have seventh nerve. In this case, it's been cut, so we can see a little bit more. Um, but uh, it's seventh nerve, uh, and this would be the intracranial segment uh, going into the internal auditory canal coming straight, um, giving off the geniculic ganglion, which gives off the GSPN, and then forcing, making a very sharp turn, going laterally and inferiorly, going around the horizontal canal, entering the fallopian canal and going out uh, towards the stylomastoid foramen. Um, here is our sigmoid sinus. Um, jugular bulb. Here's our lower cranial nerves entering the jugular foramen. We also have eighth nerve here going towards uh, the internal auditory canal. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, um, 11. Vascularly, we have the basilar artery coming up from the two verts, uh, a vert giving off the posterior inferior cerebellar artery, the basilar giving off the anterior inferior cerebellar artery, coach, uh, which is going towards the IAC at the level of seven and eight, um, and then coming up, giving off uh, the superior cerebellar artery, which is coming around, going on the superior surface of the cerebellum. And all of that is infratentorial. Uh, now, as we go supratentorial, we have the, the PCA, which is coming around here. Uh, we don't see. Uh, anything above that. So same, same view or same anatomy from a more surgical perspective, the tentorium is also open here. This is a pre-sigmoid view and it's the same anatomy. So we have the, we're just lifting the temporal lobe here. This is the free of the tentorium. Here's fourth nerve wrapping around the tentorium. Uh, as we saw, exit, exiting the dura, entering cavernous sinus. Here's fifth nerve going up and over the Petrus Ridge, uh, Meckel's Cave into the middle fossa. Uh, sixth nerve on its way to Durello's Canal. Seven and eight coming here. Uh, eight going into uh, the uh, canals and the cochlea. Seventh nerve, as we can see, geniculic ganglion, GSPN medially, uh, tympanic segment laterally, coming all the way around the fallopian canal, right into the stylomastoid foramen. Uh, and here's the sigmoid sinus and our lower cranial nerves. Uh, and the same zoomed in, this is now just with seventh nerve transposed. Um, and we can see all of, all of the same anatomy there. You can get a much more clear view of sixth nerve. So that is pretty much the anatomy of the temporal bone and the cerebellopontine angle as seen through three different surgical perspectives, posterior lateral, which is the retrosigmoid approach, lateral, which is the transmastoid approach or presigmoid approach, and anterolateral, the anterior transpetrosal approach. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.